Let me first say welcome back from, uh, from the summer, although today feels like we're actually still experiencing a little bit of summer. Thank you for joining us at the board in the Globe and Mail for our 2014 mayoral debate. I'm Carol Wilding, President and CEO of the Toronto Region Board of Trade, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today. So if it's September, we know that our municipal campaign must be in the home stretch. Eight long campaign months have passed. And while October 27th seems that it's just around the corner, there are still more than seven weeks for candidates to earn our vote. Something that I believe that we'll try to do today. And as we see from this packed room, there is a lot of interest in our city's future. In just a moment, I will introduce our debaters, but first, a thank you. All of our Board of Trade events are made possible through the very generous and continued support of our four principal sponsors. So please join me in a round of thanks to Accenture, Rogers, Scotiabank, and the Globe and Mail. I'd also like to thank our supporting sponsors today, Waste Management and Freeman Audiovisual. A round of applause for our supporting sponsors. And also to Bell for purchasing a table for post-secondary students this afternoon. Our thanks to Bell. I'd now like to introduce some special guests joining us at our principal table. And I'll kindly ask if you could hold your applause until the entire table has been introduced. And I'll invite each guest to please stand as I introduce them. Please join me in welcoming Cal Bricker, Vice President, Public Affairs, Waste Management Canada. Darren Nippard, Managing Director, Toronto Accenture, a member of our Board of Directors and Chair of our Infrastructure Committee. Philip Crawley, Publisher and CEO, The Globe and Mail. The other members of our principal table have joined me here on the stage. Tony Keller is the editorial page editor of The Globe and Mail. He will moderate today's debate. And of course, our special guests, four mayoral candidates. From your left to right, John Torrey, Rob Ford, Olivia Chow, and David Signacki. Ladies and gentlemen, your principal table. We are uh, delighted to have some other special guests, <clears throat> excuse me, here with us this afternoon. From our board of directors, Peter Klein and Angela Ionetziello are here. From our advisory council, Carl Lavis and Ann Golden. Former mayor of Toronto, Toronto, Senator the Honorable Art Eggleton is here. And I know a number of current and former city councillors. A warm welcome to all of you. So, Today's debate is part of our Think Twice, Vote Once Decision 2014 campaign. The Board of Trade members have been very instrumental in the development of this campaign. We launched it last January with the goal to put the focus on how our political leaders propose to manage our region's most pressing challenges. Challenges such as transit and transportation, how will they move our region from gridlock to mobility? Municipal infrastructure, how will they ensure infrastructure can withstand population growth and changing climate? And job growth, how will they enable and promote economic growth? And closing the prosperity gap, how will they ensure that we make our city and our region more livable for everyone? Addressing these challenges or not will absolutely define our future in a very real way. As data in our annual benchmarking report, Scorecard on Prosperity, identifies, there is an opportunity. We can take the Toronto region from simply good enough to great, something that we've set at the board for a while now. But to do so, we need credible plans from our mayoral candidates, backed by credible means to address them. The board, our 12,000 members across the region and our city, needs strong leadership. We are challenging mayoral candidates to put forward clear plans, and it won't be easy. Even when challenges like gridlock are easy to define, solutions are elusive. We all will have choices to make. Our campaign is about asking our members and the public to make informed choices. That's what we mean by challenging everyone to think twice before casting your vote. I encourage you all to go on our website, thinktwicevoteonce.com, and to get informed. You've got a pamphlet that's on your seat. Please do take a few moments to take a look at it. For the board, the choice of where we want to position the Toronto region is clear. We can and must aspire to greatness. Whether it's in the world of business or government, 
History warns us not to be complacent. We have to shape the future and not let it shape us. And with that, it's now my pleasure to welcome Tony Keller, editorial page editor for The Globe and Mail, to begin the debate. Carol, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us for this highly anticipated mayoral debate. As Carol has, uh, has just said, and as many of the candidates have said, the campaign for mayor really hits its stride after Labor Day. We have just seven weeks to go until Election Day. I'm sure there will be many interesting twists and turns over this time, perhaps even some right here today. The debate will be divided into uh, two sections, and I'll just go over quickly the, the format and the ground rules for this afternoon. First off, to allow us to get in as much debate as possible, there will be no opening statements from the candidates. Instead, the first half of the debate will begin with a series of questions for the candidates. I will ask a question, and each candidate will be given one minute to answer. Once every candidate has had a chance to answer, there will be two minutes of open debate amongst the candidates. And then, in the second half of the debate, the candidates will be asked questions that will appear on the video screens in the hall and online for those of you uh, watching online. These questions are from Global Mail readers and from Board of Trade members. And each of these questions, these video questions, will be directed at a specific candidate. That candidate will have one minute to answer the question, and then following their one minute answer, there will be an open debate lasting for two minutes. Any and all of the candidates can jump in and debate that is what we are here for. And then, to wrap up the day's proceedings, each of the candidates will deliver their closing remarks. Now, throughout the debate, we have time clocks to keep us on track here, here, and one in front of me. Um, I will jump in only as needed, such as to end the candidates' time if they go long. And speaking of time, I have, I have a bell that will ring when your time is up. When you hear that, your one minute is up. And that means we are almost ready to begin right now. At 11 a.m. this morning, we held a draw with representatives from each of the candidates present. We used this draw to determine the candidate's placement here on the platform. And that order also determines the order in which candidates will be asked questions in part one of this debate. So in just a moment, I will start the first question with the candidate immediately to my right, Mr. Soknaki then each candidate will have a chance to answer in turn, moving from right to left. The second question will go to Ms. Chow, and so on and so on, around the rim. And that is it for the rules of this debate. We are ready to begin. Let us get to our first question. Mr. Soknaki, as I said, was drawn to lead off. Mr. Soknaki, the first question begins with you. If you were writing a job description for Toronto's mayor, how would you describe the mayor's key roles and what qualities would you be looking for? You have one minute. It's a question of vision, ability to work with others, to lead and also to follow, to make sure that the objectives are met, to make sure that one measures how you were going to get uh, to where we want to go, a clarity as well as an ability to accept people for which they are and an overall willingness to accept, uh, to accept people. At the same time, a high standard, a standard of excellence to make sure that one achieves what we want to uh, achieve. You know, Toronto is one of the best places on the planet and we need to make sure that we not only uh, uh, keep that bar but raise it up. So those are some of the de descriptors, but above all, it, one needs to lead and bring people together to achieve the objectives. Mr. Soknaki, thank you. Ms. Chow, you have one minute. The job description for a mayor would be the following. A person that have the vision and the leadership skill to bring our city uh, to moving forward and have a very realistic goals and timetable to deliver that kind of service and would put customer service as the, the top priority. Uh, a leader that have proven track record with the experience that can deliver results and a track record to make sure that their funding is in place to move forward. And also uh, a leader that have uh, listening skills and have qualification that work with everyone uh, around them. And a, a, a leader that is decisive and a way to make a decision. 
Ms. Chow, thank you. Mr. Ford, you have one minute. I would tell that person what you say you're going to do, do. The taxpayers come first. When they say jump, you say how high. Do you understand tax dollars? It comes down to experience. Do you have that experience at this job? That's why I would be asking them. Do you understand that people of all races and religions deserve the same treatment? And they understand that underprivileged people have the exact same rights as people that are fortunate. It's very straightforward. It's a job that you have to have passion for. If your passion's not there, the job's not for that person. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Mr. Torrey. I think it starts in this particular job, I may not say it out of every job, in this particular job, ability to work with others. Because in the end, you just can't get anything done in our city if you can't work with the city council, if you can't work with the other governments, if you can't work with business and labor and nonprofit organizations and educational institutions and so on. I think it moves from there to competence. I think competence is a hugely important uh, thing that allows you to manage a complex organization, actually instill at that place a sense of accountability, which I think is sorely lacking. I think it involves being a mayor that can be the mayor of all the people, somebody that's going to unite the city into one Toronto, stop with the division between Scarborough and downtown or between uh, one group or another uh, in the city. And I think it's somebody who can achieve results, who has a proven record of executive leadership in, in, and actually leading an organization, setting the direction and producing results. Because in the end, one of the biggest problems with government, I think, has been lots of statements of good intention, very few uh, concrete results. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tory. And now it's time for the open debating round. Candidates, you have two minutes. I turn the floor over to you. Well, what was not mentioned so far was experience, a record of success. And I have to say with respect to Mr. Ford, that also includes representing people, represent also the LGBT community as well. I would also ask this mayor whether there will be a change of direction. I think we need a change of direction so we can create a better city. In the last four years, we have a mayor that have not been able to accomplish what needs to be done, whether it's moving people faster now or to create jobs because we have seen that a higher percentage of young people are now unemployed and we are being stuck like sardines into uh, cars, subways, and uh, um, streetcars and buses. So I think it's important that this leader have not only have the proof and track record, not only have the vision, but have a clear sense that the direction of this city needs a fundamental change. Well, I'll agree with you and disagree with you on that. I think we need a change of direction, but with respect, not back to the days we've seen before, where what we get is uh, no accountability on spending, uh, just a sort of promising programs one after the other without any real accountability as to how they're going to be paid for, or when there is any accountability, it's all about more taxes, new taxes, and higher taxes, which I think we have an obligation to make sure we produce some real accountability and effectiveness on the dollars we are spending before we start talking about raising more uh, money out of the pockets of, of John, the when you were at Queen's Park, how much did you save the taxpayers besides giving yourself a $40,000 pay increase? You had three years to save taxpayers money. How much did you save, John? I stood up, Mr. Ford, day after day after day, and my job was the opposition leader to ask questions. I made right. suggestions. I asked questions of the government, and you can go back and look. I did it day after day. In fact, I was frustrated. But you didn't save any money. What? I was the opposition leader, Rob. Do you but understand? you didn't save any money. I stood up day after day and did what the opposition leader was supposed to do, which Thanks, was made John. suggestions Thanks. as to I'm how I'm going to have to stop saved. it right there. Um, that concludes this particular question. Our second question begins with Ms. Chow. All candidates have made many pledges in this election campaign. What taxes and fees will you raise to pay for your pledges? Ms. Chow, you have one minute. We need to be honest about how we fund our priorities. That's why this is an excellent question. You need to know how I'm going to fund what I promise. So I've been very clear that I would keep the property tax increase around the rate of inflation, and that I would also ask those that have a bit more to pay a touch more. And that increase is on the land transfer tax of those people that are going to be buying a house or a condo that are more than $2 million. It will be a one percentage point increase. 
and we generate enough funds for us so that we can invest now, so that we could use these funds to begin to plan the downtown relief subway line so we can do the engineering studies and create jobs and make sure that we move people faster. Thank you, Ms. Chow. Mr. Ford. Well, so everybody saw my subway plan, and people want subways. They want subways in the east, west, north, and south of the city. And there is a funding way. Just like I said before, I was going to build Scarborough subways. I said, I'm going to build it four years ago. And we're building it. OK? Now I'm going to say I'm going to connect the Shepherd Line out to Scarborough, the DRL, the Finch, and Eglinton. Eglinton is going to go above ground in Scarborough. And it's going to go above ground in Eglinton if John Tory is the mayor. John, I want to, again, clarify your position. On LRTs, are you going to support LRTs on Shepherd and on Finch and on Eglinton Avenue? You asked me these, one of these questions once before whether I'd build a subway on Finch Avenue, and I gave you a straightforward answer, and the answer is no. No, so you support LRTs? It actually, yes, okay, I'm going to build an LRT there because that's, that's what's what going to be justified uh, by the numbers and making decisions based on facts, not on your fantasy plans. Okay. Thank you for. <laughs> uh, that was a portion of Mr. Ford's time. I'll give uh, one minute now to, uh, to Mr. Tory. He gave me some of his time. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I accepted it. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm giving you a minute. <laughs> I've been very clear, ladies and gentlemen. I would, uh, it would, would limit any property tax increases to the rate of inflation or below. And I think that before anybody talks, anybody talks about raising any other taxes, they have an absolute obligation to look every taxpayer in the eye, everyone in this room, everybody watching on TV, everybody who lives in the city and say we have done everything we possibly can to produce a real culture of accountability. So all the major projects that go over budget by tens of millions of dollars routinely, you see the list, that we have actually found a way to stop that from happening. And to make sure when we hear about all kinds of different real estate departments, to cite but one example in the city, that we've actually consolidated those and had one or two really good real estate departments that we need. And then I think you have to work with the other governments as well to see that we get our fair share for this city to finance the things we need to do, including transit, including housing, and so on. And I think those are the things you have to do first before you then turn to the taxpayers, some of whom are just trying to stay in their homes uh, and, and can't face higher property taxes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Suknaki, over to you. The question was about taxes. How are you going to pay for it? What fees? Well, first of all, with respect to property taxes, what I've said is that an increase in about in line with the rate of inflation. I also spoke about reforming the land transfer tax at opportunity cost, but no additional cost to taxpayers and allowing homeowners, new homeowners, to be, uh, enter the housing market. I also brought in the reduction of business and multi-residential taxes when I was budget chair, a time of which I was proud of the budgets that we put in. And savings, well, you're going to not find savings unless you deal with those large budgets, unless you deal with the police, unless you deal with the EMS budgets. And I'm going to talk about that third portfolio, which we aren't talking about, about raising taxes, and that's debt. You know, we were talking, there was mention earlier a couple of minutes ago about fantasy transit plans. Well, I have to tell you, the fantasy transit plans out here are going to incur debt. And that's going to put burden on all of us as taxpayers. Thank you, Mr. Soknacki. It's now time for the open debating round. Candidates, you have two minutes. I turn the floor over to you. Mr. Torrey, I want to ask you, and maybe Mr. Ford too, you didn't say how you're going to fund all your priorities. We know that in your transit scheme, you want to rely on a very highly risky financial scheme. And it's very similar, actually, close to identical from what Mr. Ford have been suggesting in the last four years. It hasn't worked <clears throat> then. And he's suggesting it now. What we have seen in New York using this tax incremental scheme is that it doesn't work. It only produced $1 out of the $10 that's supposed to come, and as a result, New Yorkers are settled with a huge debt, which means that our children and well, our that, grandchildren that are going to have to thing. pay Hold on, hold on, John, hold on, John, 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 John. I, I just want to... I, I just want to... Stop your backtrack plan and talk about my subways for a second, and I'm going to pay for your subways. Plan. Hold on, hold on. Plan. Yeah. I know the provincial government, when I'm re-elected, will work with me. You know I have a very good working relationship with the prime minister. 
and I know I mean, you are, do are too. You, are but you know what, John? Me? You know are what, you John? John? And then you know the revenue right from Bill Toronto. Do you know what Bill Toronto is? I'm not going to get money you. from. Is if development Jimmy charges, has a bunch public of money we don't know about. That's the only guy who can buy Jimmy but Kimmel. Even if Tax and collect financing, future assessment growth. I've got nine funding options, John. But your back tax plan has one revenue tools. But Rob, even if you did, have you not gone on the radio and said you support gas tax? You double the gas tax, Rob. No, I'm just, I'm just wondering you're, about your back you, track plan. You, you said this stuff up. You, you and your brother, the revenue plan. You and your brother Not make up more stuff. Wow, okay. Well, no, right. because he's your mouthpiece half the time. Oh, you make this stuff up. Tony, why are you getting so defensive? I I'm have, just asking no, some right. questions. Can I have my turn now, <laughs> Tony? Maybe I can have my turn to respond. First of all, I'll say to you that, that actually I will be able to get money because I will have a decent relationship with the federal and provincial governments. You have burned those relationships, okay. just like you've burned the relationships with the city council. Right. And as for Ms. Chow, she has Thank more you. positions on how she'll increase taxation at the rate of inflation, Thank around you, the Tory. rate of inflation, reasonable taxes around Thank the you. rate of inflation. Thank you, Mr. Heavens Tory. Above. Our, uh, we'll move on to our third question. Our third question begins, uh, Mr. Ford will be the first one to answer. Mr. Ford, Toronto is, is growing. Its densification in the core is being referred to as the Manhattanization of the city. Does the current city plan include the tools the city needs to deal with this new challenge? Mr. Ford, you have one minute. I've invested a billion dollars a year in infrastructure. Let me give you some facts. KPMG's most, we are the most tax competitive city in the world. That wasn't like that four years ago, friends. Best North American cities for business and investment were second. That wasn't like that. Forbes magazine, most influential global city, were tenth. That was not like that four years ago. We issued 140 new building permits, 80,000 residential, 60,000 commercial and industrial. Approved $29 billion of total new development. We have a GDP that grew by 12%. That's $70 billion in exports every year. Friends, that was not like that four years ago, eight years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. This city is in the best financial shape it has ever been in. And if you want to go backwards, you can go backwards to here, your left, or really, well, you should be on the left too, but here, Thank you. or we Thank can move you, forward Ford. in a positive direction. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Ford. Mr. Tory, you have one minute. You want to talk about, uh, look, I'd ra you know what? You talk about people going backwards. I don't want to go down the drain, and that's where we were headed. But having said all that, that was a very, look, uh, let me get back to the question which was about all the developments that have been going on. It's good news. It's great news that people want to invest. It's great news that people want to build. It's great news that they want to build and, and that people want to keep coming here from around the world. And it was great news last week when I heard that 750 stories of new development was approved at a single council meeting, but it also caused me to worry and to come back to the question, did we really answer the questions? Have we really answered the questions about whether we have enough parks, whether we have enough schools, whether we have adequate transit? We know the answer to that one. The answer is no. We should have been building transit every year for the last 25 years, including the time you've been at City Hall, Mr. Ford, and we didn't do it. We should have been building one transit stop every year, but we didn't do that. And the same goes for recreation and so on. And so I say, yes, I take heart from the fact the city is building. I take ha heart from the fact there is some intensification ta taking place, but I think we've got to do a much better job of answering those questions about the infrastructure when we build the buildings, not after. Thank you, Mr. Torrey. Mr. Soknacki, you have one minute. The trouble with the answer so far is, is it's smoke and mirrors. Uh, yes, there's additional development, but at the same time, our development costs are not at break even. We need to significantly raise our development charges to break even level. And yes, it will mean additional costs, but we need to have that infrastructure in place. At the same time, we need to work about reforming Section 37 and, uh, and uh, extra density charges. We need to make sure that those funds are there for, to make sure that we are able to afford the uh, densification that's coming. We have opportunities as well to make uh, inclusionary housing and inclusionary zoning to make sure that our housing and our parks and our systems are affordable. But the last thing as well is we need to make sure that we are affording the transit that we plan to build to move those people around. Because if we start drawing transit lines on the map and hope for the best, we are going to end up with the worst and a very expensive cost it'll be. Thank you, Mr. Soknaki. Ms. Chow, one minute. The downtown Toronto is vibrant, is prosperous, and I am very, very happy to see all that growth. And I was part 
of uh, the reason why there is a lot of growth, because I represented downtown Toronto as city council from 91 to 2005. So not only do you see good density and lots of people living there and working there, there's also nice parks, recreation centers, and some schools being built, and some library, a new library also just been opened. But having said that, we need to do so much better because a lot of people are stuck in gridlock. They can't move. That's why I support the downtown subway relief line. It is the number one priority for the TTC. That's why in my transit plan, you will see that as a priority, and I have identified funding sources to make sure it gets built, because we need to build on our prosperity and our vibrancy of the downtown Toronto. Thank you, Ms. Chow. It's great, uh, it's great uh, Olivia, that that's become a priority of yours, because at the beginning of our campaign, you said it shouldn't even be discussed in this election because it was so far away, and I guess that's my point. That downtown relief line, which I support too, but it will come only in 17 years. And you haven't spelled out how you'd pay for it. The smart track But you proposal, haven't spelled out how you're going to pay for any of it. Because it's not going to work. Brings it's fantasy money, John. In seven years and, and takes pressure off the Young Street line because it takes people away from John, where they're going now no, no, no. and gives them another way to get downtown on the smart track. Right. John, John yes, it's, it's, it's fantasy money. Them, please, David, one second. Well, wait a minute. John, you said at the beginning, you got fantasy money. John, please, don't be distracted by him. Is this is like the first one I've ever out of here. Come on. I know you're freaking flopping around. Bring it on. I've got to get you off the hook. Bring it on. Okay. At the beginning, you said that the downtown relief line is fantasy money. Okay. 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 You support the downtown relief line. A young street relief line. And then and you, you know said, what, hold on, I've got this great backtrack Check plan. it out. Okay. This is a young okay. street relief line. You know why? Okay. It's going to take me away from here and it takes you on to. But you said you support it. It's on the existing GO train tracks, Rob. So there is no downtown relief line. So we don't have to dig tunnels and buy land. So your program will never have to. So flow from what you said a month ago. It's gone. No, it's true. Well, Not true. It's this gone. Is you know, Mr. Gone Tory, Mr. Tory, Mr. Tory, let me be clear. Yes. Let me be clear. Please. You said yes to the downtown relief I said subway yes line, to and then you relief. said no. Olivia. And yes then to you young said, for, wait, hang on. Fantasy yeah. lines allow with me, fantasy money is what it finish, is. Please. Yo, girl, 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 allow I'm not me to finish, please. Allow me to finish. You say yes to the subway relief line, then you say no, and it's a maybe. And then you, before that, you were saying, uh, yes to the LRTs, light rail. Now you're saying no to light rail. No, you I'm said not. yes to uh, Eggington. No, first you said no to Eggington Connect, and then you say yes to Eggington Connect, and you say no to Eggington Connect. You are changing your mind so many times. Now, it's making me May I respond to all of this collectively, Mr. Tory, Mr. Moderator? Mr. Yeah. Tory, you, you, you cannot. You have, are you trying to say anything to get elected? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been very, very clear because, from the beginning. This represents is, Young Street Relief. This is Smart Track, which will cause people who not presently so smart. go to the Young Street subway to go on to have an alternative to get downtown. And, I, and, and furthermore, well, it, it, it will get done in seven years. Your Young Street Relief Line, which I also support, will get Somewhere. done not before Thank you, 17 Mr. years from now. Thank you, Mr. Tory. We will move on to our next question, which will begin with Mr. Tory. Uh, Mr. Tory, what is your plan for the Gardner Expressway, and how are you going to pay for it? You have one minute. Uh, first of all, uh, I am not in favor and back to Eglinton Connects, for example. Uh, the only reason I said I had a hesitation about that is it involved closing down a lane of traffic on Eglinton Avenue because they thought the traffic was moving so well. And the, by the way, the city study said it would divert traffic into the residential neighborhoods, which I am opposed to. And, and, and similarly, Every one of the options presented thus far for the Gardner Expressway involving tearing it down extends the commute time. And they write these reports saying it'll only extend the commute time by eight minutes or nine minutes each way. And I say, well, only. That's easy for you to say when you're writing reports. But nine or eight or 12 minutes times two is 24 more minutes taken out of the lives of the people in this city who are already commuting far too long. And so I've taken the position that I would not tear down the Gardner Expressway. I'm glad a city committee is taking a look at the possible diversion of the expressway so that you could have a, an expressway connection to the parkway. And there has been no cost estimate come back on that yet, so we don't know what it is we have to pay for. But I'm sure glad they're looking at it. I would not tear it down. Mr. Tory, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Soknaki, the question is to you. Thank you very much. With respect to the Garden Expressway, I support the, uh, the change in the rerouting at the uh, south end of the um, parkway onto the Gardener. Uh, I support taking a look at the option of using those surplus lands at the south 
to help pay for the, uh, the changes and the maintenance. I uh, do not support until there is alternate transit there, uh, the taking down of the gardener. I recognize that also the, the gardener at its um, east end actually supports the, uh, the neighboring uh, communities and businesses act as an as a on-off, and so it's important that we understand the local issues as well as the, the larger issues. So I support keeping the gardener uh, and using the, uh, the opportunity of rerouting the south end of the parkway to afford uh, a good portion of it. Thank you, Mr. Soknaki. Ms. Chow, the question is to you. I support the gardener being rerouted uh, so that it can be uh, opened up, the waterfront can be opened up for development and for uh, the public to enjoy. But I also believe that we need to connect the gardener to the DVP. So taking it down will take away that option. So the option in front of city council right now with the staff report coming forward is a good plan and that's what I would support. Having said that, however, Mr. Tory have accused me for taking down the gardener, which I've never said. He has accused me of taking uh, or saying no to the downtown relief line, which I haven't said. And now he's saying that I, he's attacking me for supporting the downtown relief line. So I, I just don't understand where Mr. Tory is coming from, especially on the gardener and transit plans. Thank you, Ms. Chow. Uh, Mr. Ford. Well, I've made my point very clear 14 years ago, I said, we have to invest in the Gardner Expressway. We are investing in the Gardner Expressway. I have invested in the Gardner Expressway, and we're going to continue to invest in the Gardner Expressway with a billion dollars every year over the next 10 years. You see the repairs. The people take the lecture, you look up, you see the repairs. It's getting done. Friends, what I said I was going to do, I am doing. I said we're going to build subways. We're building subways. Okay, folks, these are ways of transportation. I come in behind those damn streetcars every day. And we've got new streetcars. I've invested $13 million next year to improve our transit right away. So you tear down the gardener, that traffic is going to go to the side streets. I'm not quite sure. I know you don't support, me might be taken off on planes, you never know, but I know you don't support uh, expansion of the island airport. We haven't had a chance to discuss that. I it's support time, Mr. Ford. expansion of the island airport, John. I wonder what you do. Candidates, you back. have uh, we, two minutes to go at it. Can we come back to the question of the, of, the, uh, yeah. of the debate yeah. here on Gardner. transportation? Because Olivia yes. said that yes. I had somehow said at some point that you didn't uh, the, support the Young Street Relief Line. You said it shouldn't be a priority, but I think the much more important question you've never can answered. And I've been subject quite properly to all kinds of discussion and examination, including here today about tax increment financing for Smart Track. But you've never told us how you're going to pay for the downtown relief line. In fact, you've never even told us what your version of the downtown relief line is. Is it half of the line on the east, or is it the full line? And the one thing we know for sure, we do know this for sure, regardless of how you're going to pay for it, and you might explain that now, that it won't be done for 17 years. We absolutely know that, whereas Smart Track will be done in seven years. This can be done in seven years because it's on existing GO train tracks, no tunneling, no buying of property. It can be it done. It can be so done, but us, it'll be never paid us, for, John. Tell us, it'll it'll never be tell us how for. you're going to pay for, for, for your downtown relief fund. For. How are you going to pay? Can that I talk tip about will never the happen. Can I talk about the Gardner? Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford, under your failed leadership, I remember the size of the basketball concrete chunks falling down from the gardener six times two years ago, six times. And the gardener was falling apart. And during those four years, you left an environmental uh, assessment that was supposed to be done. You put it aside for two years and you didn't move forward to it. And that is what, not what leadership is all about because the gardener needs fixing. It should have been done. Decisions should have been made long time ago and we are now facing catch up. It's done. I already said that. We're fixing it and we're already investing it. I just said that, Olivia. No, you missed that? You, right, you're going to okay. do it. That's all right. Where are you, you going to find the money to do it? I, it's you, all right. you think half the time because you say something, that means it's true. It like, hasn't been done. You're the greatest one. You're, you're the one. Like, but you're John, the one that's that just like the done. tip. 
you're the one that says you've done more for young people than any man in recorded history. You're the one who says that the gardener is fixed, just like that, presto. Yeah. You've been going around until today, because frankly, David Sucknacki kept you honest because he kept saying, no, you haven't, saying, the Scarborough no. subway, I said I would build it, it's done. No, it's not Nobody's really. riding on it yet. You know, I want it to be built too, Sorry. but you haven't you done know, these things. You know this. It's failed Sorry, leadership. You know. So, we're Gentlemen, that's the, the that's the end of this, that's the end of this round. That's the end of this round. Mr. Ford, Mr. Tory, that's the end of this round, thank you. Uh, we come back to Mr. Soknaki for question number four. Mr. Soknaki, the question is about the economy and economic growth. As mayor, what concrete things would you do to create jobs and attract investment? Well, first of all, I'm going to uh, preemptively uh, speak about uh, our sorry state because since uh, Mr. Ford has taken office, there are 8,200 fewer jobs in the city. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the jobs, we have continuously lost jobs since, uh, since 87. The jobs that are being created are in our creative industries. They're in small and medium-sized enterprises. And what we need to do is that we need to make sure that we have efficient infrastructure to make it work. We need to make sure that our taxes stay competitive, not the lowest, but competitive. And I've moved, uh, when I was budget chair, the uh, reduction of business taxes, something that's going to expire in 2015 and needs to be reduced. We need to enhance our competitive economy in terms of innovation. I've proposed uh, Innov Innovate Toronto as a whole host of measures to make sure that we're innovative. We need to make sure that beyond our infrastructure and our taxes that our city remains a vibrant place to live where the next generation of Canadians and entrepreneurs want to live inside of our city and that's what will make us prosperous over the long term. Thank you, Mr. Soknaki. Ms. Chow, the question is to you. I will have a, I have a very clear jobs plan. It has two components. Number one, that we will work with the corporations that are now doing business with the City of Toronto to sign a community agreement, community benefits agreement, so that we can create 5,000 jobs for young people. We did that at Regent Park when we are revitalizing the Regent Park. We signed an agreement with Daniels and 500 jobs were created. We can do more. We can do it all across the city, making our capital dollars work for us. Number two, let us support the small businesses because right now their property tax is too high. We need to continue to keep their property tax low. And also we have to streamline the application process. There's too much red tape. We need to put everything on uh, the internet so that they can apply through the internet, and not necessarily just have to show up at East York. So we can do all that and create lots of jobs. Thank you, Ms. Chow. Mr. Ford. Well, well friends, you do not fix what's not broken. And this city is booming right now. It's in better financial shape than it's ever been. We created 56,000 jobs. This is extremely low because when you hand out, cut the red tape, 140,000 new building permits, you do the math, that's a lot more than 56,000 new jobs. When you have tourism, 14 million visitors in 2013, 13 million hotel rooms, that is creating jobs. We broke tourism records three years in a row. You look at the economic activity that generates. That's only six and a half billion dollars every year. That creates jobs. Folks, I have a proven track record. I come from a business background. They're talking about doing it. I have done it. And I'm going to continue doing it for the next four years. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Mr. Tory. I'm not sure the 10% of people who are unemployed above the national average or the 20% of people among young people who are unemployed would be uh, sharing your view that it's booming. You've said you've created 56,000 jobs, but there are 83,000 people between the ages of 16 and 24 who are out of school, out of work, and not in a training program. So I'm not sure they describe it as booming. To answer the question, I think we've got to create the proper environment here with accountability on taxing and spending at the City Hall. I think we've got to do that as well for the existing small businesses, let alone those who are looking to invest in this country. Secondly, I think we have to build infrastructure. It's one of the reasons I am so committed and passionate about SmartTrack, is that we can get that done in seven years, it will be bold, it will make a big difference, and replace the fact we didn't build one subway station a year for 22 years, we will build 22 new stations in this surface rail. 
And the third thing we have to do, and, and by the way, it connects people to jobs and makes it more attractive for people to invest here and get around the gridlock. And the third thing you have to do is sell, sell, sell. Sell the city. Go out to people around the world and get them to come here. And that takes a mayor with a reputation and the knowledge uh, to know how to get business to decide to come here. Thank you, Mr. Tory. Candidates, you, you have two minutes to debate this. Well, to begin, Rob, we've lost 29,500 jobs in the last six months. Uh, since you've taken office, the unemployment has gone up 8,200 in Toronto. We have unemployment higher than when you found it. Uh, Rob, it's just you're entitled to your opinions, but not to your facts. Well, <laughs> and you will, you will notice that none of the candidates actually talks about how many jobs they would create because they don't really have a concrete plan. Mr. Torrey, your plan on the infrastructure plan won't happen, according to the CEO of Metrolink, the fastest they can electrify go train is 10 years. So you're asking people to wait 10 years before they would see any improvement now, on public Olivia, transit. I think it's very important and, to be honest about a, what the president of Metrolink said, because well, we could check it out and what he said. And what he said was this. He said the electrification of the entire GO system could be done in 10 years. I'm asking that two lines Maybe. be done, two lines right. only that make up the smart track here, which are the two lines <laughs> from, from, uh, from Scarborough, the Stouffville line, and from Etobicoke, the Kitchener line. Two lines, and I'm going to be passionate and I'm going to be persistent and determined to get those two in the top two or three, which means it can be done well within 10 years. So John, don't I, mislead John, people about what the president of Metrolinx had John, to say. It's not uh, right. John, can you put your backtrack back, please? You talk about your private sector record, don't you? Let me see. You left the CFL with a mountain in debt. That's not correct? I a saved this actually, actually oh yeah, as okay. a volunteer, so, Rob, hold on. your beloved CFL a and mine, I worked there for nine years as a John, volunteer. I know you don't like Look to hear the up. truth. I, know I you returned don't it to stability so you, you as took, a volunteer. Hold on. No, you no, introduced negative option that building. Let's, that is, I didn't that even, is hidden taxes. Rob, That's charging people Rob, for something they never ordered on. Did you not do that? If I were to tell you. Did you not do that? If I were to tell you. Did you not do that? No, I didn't because you know what? Check it out. I That's didn't exactly even work did, for John. Rogers John when it was brought in. I did. didn't even you work there. You put taxes on their bills. I didn't. No, you didn't work I there I didn't now. even work oh. there when they did it. Oh, Gentlemen, okay, that I'm concludes this question. The star had question. to correct that when yeah, they said it. That concludes this question. I didn't yeah, even right, work there right, when right, they right. did it. We'll move on to the next question. This is the actually the last question in this particular round. This question begins with Ms. Chow. The question is about personal integrity. As mayor, what will you do to ensure respect for the conflict of interest rules in the mayor's office. Ms. Chow, you have one minute. I believe that their integrity is at the core of a leader, especially a job like the mayor's. And I believe that what we need to do is be very upfront about what we own, what our business is, and make sure there is, we do not mix private and public interest. And yes, the municipal act and the Conflict of Interest Act needs to be expanded, so there's no shade of gray. But we have to be very clear, and we need to declare and put everything that we have in blind trust so that we do not mix public and private interests. And that is the core of what integrity is all about in the office of the Mayor of Toronto. Thank, thank you, Ms. Chow. Mr. Ford. Folks, let me tell you one thing. No one but no one can buy the Fords. Nobody. Deco Labels has not benefited one iota from any of these misnomers that are spread around. Rob Ford was taken to court on a conflict of interest for kids, for my Rob Ford Football Foundation helping kids. And who won? I won, using my letterhead. Using my letterhead to help fundraise money for a foundation to help kids, the poorest kids in the city. And they took me to court, and I won. So my conflict of interest is zero. You can listen to the innuendos and the rumors, folks, but the facts speak for themselves. Again, Deco Labels has not benefited once, not once, from any, any city business that we've done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Mr. Torrey. 
Well, I felt this matter important enough that at the very beginning of the campaign, I think in probably the first two weeks, I set out something that you'd like to believe was unnecessary. But, because uh, frankly, it's not necessary in any other job. Uh, you just do it as a matter of what makes sense and what's right. But I set out a code of conduct uh, that I think any mayor should follow and that I certainly signed my name to it. It hangs in my campaign office uh, because it set out the way I would behave as the mayor. And it, it starts with things like showing up for work uh, and sort of being there. I, <laughs> I, I always, I've always found in most jobs I've had that was fairly basic. But, um, and then it goes on from there to something else I always thought was fairly basic, which is following the rules. And I'm not trying to make light of this. This is serious business, following the rules, all the rules, and, and following the rules. And that's because I think we're electing somebody here to be the head of the city, uh, to be not just the head of the city government, not just somebody who's going to be hopefully competent enough to run the city government and get some results, but also somebody who is a leader, who is to set an example. Um, who is to stop those kinds of questions that are getting asked in far too many households in this city today about things that have gone on. And so that's why I set out the code of conduct that I did. Thank you, Mr. Troy. <laughs> Mr. Soknaki, you have one minute. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Well, actually, bef well before the campaign, as a councillor, when I first came on city council, I moved uh, anti-nepotism rules, something that has still stayed in place and uh, unfortunately it was necessary when uh, I uh, was first at council. But the very first day when I uh, signed up and put down my deposit to run as a uh, candidate for this great city, uh, uh, mayor as the great city of Toronto, I signed an ethics pledge. I put out a, an ethics pledge that said among a number of things that yes, I will put out a full schedule daily to let people know exactly what I'm doing and where I'm going and what's going on. Uh, my business interests will be put in an arm's length basis and an arm's length trust to make sure that there is not only no conflict but no perception of conflict. But as well, I've moved additional methods to make sure that the City of Toronto Act that has the ability to rigorously go after people is we give it teeth and we make sure that it's enforced, not only for the mayor but for members of council because a civil council is a productive council and we can have, it, we can have a civil and respectful mayor. Thank you, Mr. Soknaki. Uh, candidates, <laughs> candidates, you now have two minutes to debate this question. I have a very simple question to Mr. Ford and Mr. Torrey. Mr. Torrey, you're on the board of Rogers, and Mr. Ford, and you're still on the board of Rogers, yep. and Mr. Ford, uh, you're still own, a part owner of DECO. Yep. Would both of you put them on blind trust so that it is clear, there's a clear delineation between business and public interest. Olivia, I would be thrilled uh, to put Rogers in a blind trust, but I'd be but even more thrilled if I had the ownership of it to be able to put it in a blind trust. <laughs> so I, don't the own, no. I don't own the company. Um, I, I should well, aspire to own the company, but I sit on the board, and I have said, I have said many times that if I'm elected to be mayor, I will resign as a director of Rogers. Of course I will. But the notion of putting it into a blind trust, I don't own it. I should be so lucky. <laughs> Do you know what a silent partner is? Do you know what a silent partner is? Are you a silent partner? I'm a silent partner at DECO. I, I might be, be up at DECO. Pardon me? That'd be a first. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I'll give you that. <laughs> you know, Rob, we found it necessary Whoa. to put in an FOI for your partner. activities. Anyway, Rob, okay. we found it necessary to put in an FOI of your activities. Yeah. And uh, there's 2,000 pages that will be coming out into the public realm in the next I week. I can't wait to see And it. what it is is that it shows, in fact, that you use the office of the city mayor for campaign purposes. And that is a, that's a blatant violation okay. of all of the rules. We'll see him. Let's wait and see. I'm sure there's, sure there's going to be an article about me every day for the next 60 days. More rumors, innuendos, FYs, they don't stop. They, they just keep coming. You keep providing the and, material, you know, keep writing and, it up. But if you, you know didn't need a source, Rob, they're there. And you know what? Nothing's been true, has it, John? I, I, a lot of it, actually. Oh, really? Come on. <laughs> well, let's, let's keep bringing it on. I'm going to go back to my record. I'm going to go back to my record. Uh, saving the taxpayers a billion dollars, keep you the property robbed. taxes lower. That's not true. Lower. No, they're yeah. higher. We'll, we'll, rock, we'll wrap up uh, this section. Thank you all. Is lower than any North American Thank city. Thank you all. Um, that concludes this segment of the, of the debate. We're not going to move on to round two video questions. Uh, these questions come from Board of Trade members and Globe and Mail readers. I'll remind candidates and the audience that these questions are directed at one individual on the stage. 
Following that candidate's one minute answer, the floor will be open and all candidates will be able to, de to debate the issue for two minutes. Will you please direct your attention to the screens for the first question. Hi, my name is Peter Lancity and I'm a resident of Toronto and this question is for Olivia Chow. Toronto's policing budget is close to a billion dollars. However, crime is on a decline year over year. As Mayor of Toronto, what would you do to address this ballooning issue on behalf of the taxpayers of this city? Ms. Chow, you have one minute. That's a very, very good question. Uh, I have a lot of experience dealing with the police budget and I will make sure that it is controlled so that it does not uh, rise too high. And I think, um, in fact, we can look at reducing possibly that budget. I have a long track record on dealing with the budget, so we can look at the different shift work, uh, the, the whole notion of uh, a pay duty, we can reduce costs there. We can look at the overtime pay, and there are ways, talking with the union and working with the chief of the police, we can negotiate uh, with the union to see whether we can find some savings. And it is good that we see that the crime rate has de have de declined, um, and we do need to thank our um, uh, police officers out in the street uh, keeping the crime rate low. But yes, we can probably um, decrease the police budget somewhat. Thank you, Ms. Chow. Uh, candidates, you have two minutes Not to debate can, this question. Not only can, but ought to. Uh, there's lots of opportunities, for instance, alternate service delivery and looking at the TCHC police unit, looking at TC Toronto uh, Transit Policing, police uh, paid service, uh, paid duty assignments, increased use of technology, uh, restricted use, uh, officers can be civilianized, uh, limited increase in one um, officer patrol cars, and then as Olivia said, uh, reduced shift overlaps. Ladies and gentlemen, there is the opportunity for about 50 millions in savings without reducing the frontline complement. It is an opportunity for us. We have to do it sensitively, but it is something that we do need to get a handle on if we're to invest elsewhere in this great city. Well, I, I will say, David, you're right. We have to look at all those things, but I think we have to remind people and make sure that we're straightforward in, in saying that pretty well any of the things that were mentioned there about shifts, about how many officers in a car and so on, are either built into a collective agreement uh, with uh, an association or are the subject of court decisions or arbitration decisions. So that it's not Some as simple Some are not, as to, all it, of them are. I just John. said many of them and it's not as simple as to snap your fingers and say it's gonna happen. I think some of the easier things to do are some of the administrative things uh, where you know they have a real estate department, they have all kinds of departments that could be uh, put together with other departments of similar uh, intent in the city government but I think a lot of those things, but I tell you this much for my sake, I will not compromise what has helped to create a safe city here, which is adequately resourcing our police department. There are things we should do in consultation with the police association and the police chief and the police board, but we can't compromise a safe city, which is what we have right now. Folks, again, I asked 10% across the board. I had a problem with Chief Blair. He wasn't willing to give 10% across the board. I said, do not touch the frontline officers. He says, that's where it is. I'm sorry. There is waste in the police, but not with the frontline officers. Folks, there has to find efficiencies. We need a chief that will find the efficiencies. Hopefully, that next chief will find the efficiencies. Thank you. We will now move on to our next uh, video question. I direct your attention to the video screens. Hi, my name is Erin Dolmage, and I'm a resident of the East Danforth. My question is for John Tory. How will you address the affordable rental crisis in Toronto? Will you support real rent control or ending above the guideline rent increases in a city that's pricing out its residents? Uh, Mr. The short Tory. answer to the, to the focus of the question, which was about rent controls, is no, I would not uh, alter or, or uh, increase uh, or, or otherwise make uh, different the rent control uh, system that is presently left in place. What I think we have to do uh, is uh, address the question of supply. And I think we have to address the question of supply by putting in place uh, measures that are going to incent people uh, to uh, build more affordable housing. I would start with the area that we probably can influence the fastest, which is the public sector, and say that we should be using much more uh, opportunity on public lands, existing public uh, TCHC projects, or even Toronto Parking Authority lands, to say, let's take that asset over which we have more control and build infill housing, infill affordable housing uh, in those uh, areas and in those particular places that we can identify uh, 
uh, in the city. Uh, so I think that is the number one thing I would do uh, to help increase the supply of affordable housing uh, is, is that kind of thing as opposed to uh, tampering or tinkering or changing uh, the rent control, re the remnants of the rent control system, which I don't think, um, I think it's just something we should just leave as it is. Friends. There friends, lots of opportunity friends, friends, here friends, with respect friends, to development Nobody charges. knows Toronto Community Housing better than Rob Ford. No, that's why okay. everybody Hold asks on. about on, it. David, and that's why David, they said there's problems. David, David, every, you never, every, please, 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 every single David, debate, people David, ask please, about it. It's David, obviously I'm a problem. David, I've been in Toronto Community Housing control. every single week, meeting with people to get in, transferring, and fixing the repairs. And it's still a problem, problem Rob. You're not addressing the problems. I know. John wouldn't even get out of his car to go into Toronto Community Housing. Never mind. Go in. No. John, you're you're missing listen, the entire you don't issue, Rob. About it's not one what apartment. Don't understand. It's same all about of the apartments. Rates. And same it's not about funding the for reports one. It's for all council. of them. John, do you know what We're I understand? We're $800 million yeah, exactly. right there. So, so how can you go out no, there? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. minute. How can you go out there? there? If you've John. been there so often, and this it's has been such a great priority of yours, why is the lack of repair backlog up on your watch? We are fixing it day in, day out. John, you're not. It's going up. You're going and building more affordable housing. You go there with the cameras, but you don't work with the other governments to solve the problem. That's the story of your leadership. It's all show and no results. John, we can't even fix our existing stock. That's right. But that's, you're, so you're going to go and build more. But you're you not going to fix it, Rob. You're the mayor, John, for goodness sake. On. What are you looking at me how for? You, John, how, how can you... Because you, you want to keep building. I want to build you, more you affordable housing. People? What are you going to exist? I'm what gonna are you call, going to do? I'm going to call the other levels of government I, for starters me, that won't even pay for it. The question is about rent control. Excuse me, folks. We are talking about private rental housing. Look, allow me, please. We are talking about rent control. We're talking about private rental housing. I believe we need to build more private rental housing, and we can do that by giving tax incentive, like reducing the property, uh, the development charges, and have smart zoning, and uh, speed up the approval process so more rental housing can be built. That is the question. It's not about TCHC. That's the end of this question. Let's move on to the next video question. I direct your attention to the screens. Good afternoon, my name is Darren Nippard from Accenture and my question is to Mayor Rob Ford. Mayor Ford, as you know, our economic growth is lagging up here in North American regions and I believe it's vital for the Toronto region municipalities to work cooperatively to strengthen our economy. Could you please tell me how you will work with our regional counterparts to promote Toronto and the region to the rest of the world? Thank you. I, I think I just sort of went over that. Um, we made Toronto competitive for businesses to come from outside Ontario, from the States, to open up headquarters, create jobs, huge, huge 50, 100,000 square foot plants. We've done that. We are doing it and we have to com continue doing it. We cannot go backwards. Again, KPMG, most tax, you gotta keep taxes low. We're the most tax competitive city in the world, friends, in the world, number one. Best North American city for business and investment, number two. This is exactly what I've done. It wasn't like this four years ago. We don't have the garbage strikes. We don't have the transit strikes anymore. Library. You gotta create, oh, oh, sorry, library strike for, uh, yeah, a, a day, sorry about library strike. Um, folks, let's face the facts. I said I was gonna get a labor deal, I got a labor deal, saving $150 million. I said I was gonna contract out garbage, they could have done it, they didn't do it. I'd gar I've done that, that's $80 million. I said I was gonna find the fishies. I've done that, friends. What I said I was going to do, I've done. Two minutes Mr. to debate Ford, this. But Mr. Ford, you, we need to speak still up in, in the city. one voice when we are presenting ourselves to here. the That's people good. outside Canada That's and outside Toronto. We have to come together. Like the Regional Board of Trade, Invest Toronto, Economic Development Division, different municipalities around the GTA, we have to go out and sell ourselves with one voice representing Toronto. That's not what's happening now. I was in China representing Canada, selling beef, pork, etc. but I was also bringing them here to Canada to say that we can establish a trading hub right here in Toronto for the North American market in the trading of the Chinese currency, renminbi. It's something that needs to be done and 
as your new mayor, I will do so. May, may I just Representing say, Toronto I, I think it goes better beyond, uh, overseas. Olivia, I think it goes years. beyond just having uh, one voice. I agree with that part. I think Toronto should have one uh, central place where uh, our uh, attraction of foreign direct investment happens. But I had the privilege of working with the mayor of Pickering to write a report just in the last six months as a volunteer about this. Uh, and, and we came to the conclusion, uh, and we had people there from the whole region and lots of representation from groups like the Board of Trade. It's got to be a regional thing, too. We've got to be able to take the very best of this region so we could take Sheridan College in Brampton and a downtown bank and a Markham software firm and have them go together to the world to say, this is the region in which we want to invest. And I think we have to start to do that and it means less turf wars and more cooperation between all of the cities in this area. And that means a more cooperative approach beyond what Olivia said, which is right, which is one voice for the city of Toronto, but also one voice for the region to say, let's go out and get that investment on those Mr. jobs. Torrey, again, John, again, report, John, what you're talking it, about doing, Canada. John, Again, what you said you're going to You've done it. it. Okay. I know, I knew we're that. Doing Somehow it. I knew you we're were going to say that. that. A proven track record, John, of experience in the private with? sector and in the public sector. Who did you I go did, with? I didn't go right. up to Queen's well, Park and fall on my face. Who did you go with no, no, I learned, to get a I learned, single I learned, job? I learned, you went to I Chicago learned, and to Austin. I learned from Where a very, very smart man. A businessman and a politician. I learned from a very good one, John. Thank you very much. That's the conclusion of this section. We move now to the next Video question. Hi, I'm Susan McIsaac of United Way Toronto. I have a question for David Sagnacki. With youth unemployment at a rate of 20%, Toronto's is one of the highest in all of Canada. What plan has the City of Toronto got to address this issue, and what plan do you have? Thank you very much. Yes, youth unemployment is high, but I think the, what we need is that we need to build real jobs for youth, not not jobs for 5,000 lucky youth that happen to, uh, to get into a government program. So that's why I believe that uh, the city has a great role. The city has a role in coordinating, first of all, all of the plans and programs that are out there. Right now it's not being done. And what the city can do is put together those pieces. But at the same time, it's a recognition that jobs come from our small and medium-sized uh, businesses. And so what we need to do is we need to work with the, the schools such as Ryerson's DMZ, such as OCAD and so forth, and bring that next level of entrepreneurs up. We need to support them. We need to support them by making sure that business licenses are easy, fees are postponed where, uh, where possible, and we need to be able to enhance them by, by marketing them and, and moving them with the city. So we need to create youth employment, but real employment and real jobs over the real term. And that way it enhances our future as well. Thank you. Candidates, you have two minutes to debate this. We need to do all that plus mentorship programs because young people, if they don't have the first job experience, it's difficult for them to start out. So mentorship programs and partnership with all of youth employment organization out there, you've done very good work. We need to do more of it. And the city of Toronto actually have grant programs supporting youth employment agencies, giving the young people the experience and the know-how in how to get a job out there. And one out of five young people unemployed is a crisis and it has risen under Mr. Ford's failed I, I, I think you have to engage with the youth first. You have to understand what the youth are looking for in their futures, which I have done for 22 years, okay? And I understand what they can do and what they want to do. And I have been around youth, again, not just in Scarborough, in North York, downtown, Etobicoke, right across the city. And I've seen where they've come from. And, I, and they want a solid future. And John, right here, 140,000 building permits that I created, that's jobs. Every crane you see, that's jobs. Did you they create, weren't here before. You, they, weren't here, they weren't here before. You created them, Rob? They weren't here before. Come on, Rob. You created well, you know, them, Rob? So you're saying that the, we're not number jobs? one in the city I'm saying it's all good for taxes. News, but when you no, but John, read this a list of statistics record. off, you don't read out about the 83,000 young people that are referred John, to in the question John, uh, that are unemployed. The, and what are the ones falling behind, Rob? And look, Rob? I just want to expand on something Olivia said, which is about answering the question. And, and we do have some programs that work. She mentioned city programs. We have one called Pay. Some of you in this room probably belong to it, meaning that you create opportunities for young people. I've said I'm gonna double that program, the number of companies in it, the number of jobs for young people. It works, it's private sector driven, but it's something that's organized and kind of run by the city. And I think we've got to also build the transit. I mean, smart track, I hate to keep talking about it, but it's gonna make a big contribution to, to their debt. That's what they're gonna to contribute to. You're gonna to contribute jobs. to their debt. That's what that's gonna to contribute to. 
All right, we'll move on to the next question. Uh, direct your attention to the video screens. Hi, my name is Angela Yanuziello from AACOM. My question is to Olivia Chow about transit. With so much at stake when choosing and developing new transit projects, how will you find consensus on the right plan and funding strategy, one that results in maximum social and economic benefits? What a wonderful question. Yes, we need to break the gridlock now. My plan is the only plan that are designed by the experts. It's also a plan that is comprehensive using all mode of transport, whether it's buses, streetcar, light rail, and subways. It also is fully costed out so we can find the funding for it. And it provides help immediately. Not 10 years from now, we can improve public transit right now. And I have the experience working with other levels of government. I was a member of parliament that worked closely to make sure that the gas tax transfer to the city is now permanent and that it's indexed from the federal government so it rises with inflation. We need permanent, long-term, stable funding from both the federal and the provincial government, and I have the experience to do so. Thank you, Ms. Chow. I, I, will agree, uh, well, with, I will agree with the need for the permanent funding. I think we should have a 10-year contract between the three levels of government that provides for how much funding is coming. But I will say, Olivia, that when the questioner asked about a consensus on transit, we have a rare consensus, yeah. and people can debate it's, it till the cows come home. We have a rare consensus. Of, we have a rare, just let me it's finish. It's the LRT that's signed. We have a rare consensus among the three levels of government, federal, provincial, and municipal. I mean, they, for they the LRT. don't even agree on what day that's it is for the, the Scarborough subway. We and have the agreement in place. I tell you the one place, thing I'm not going to do is disrupt that's or overturn that, that consensus we go on day one when I get to the city hall. Because we've got to get ahead, get ahead with actually building something in this city. And, and you and build it on faster by going ahead with the LRT. Term investment. Faster, cheaper, you know, less expensively, and serves more people. Subways, yes, folks. So, subways are the way to go in the city. I don't, I, I don't understand what you don't understand about subways. John, you're, we have to go underground and we're already doing Eglinton, underground. What are you going to do in Etobicoke? That's what I want to know. Are you going to go above ground or underground in Etobicoke from or Mount Dennis out to Martin Grove? Not building no, at no, all. No, I, I need an answer for that. Or, or no, not you're not going to answer that. It's you're not, not going to answer that. Not Hold snap. on a second. I said he won't answer the question because it's going to be above ground. From Don Mills to Shepherd, you're still going to support above ground. You have to go underground. What? Oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How about Finch to the kids? How many the students were talking get? about the jobs. Let me ask you no, one. You've asked three, that, I'll ask Finch. one. Are you going to go above ground what or underground? Problem, you already said you're going to support you have with trains that run on existing go track lines? No, nowhere near a street. John, and nowhere near a street. John, They're nowhere John, near a street. What problem do you have John, with that? Maybe you could John, tell me. That's what you, smart track is. John, you cannot no, get this going what problem do you have? if your life depended on it, John. Why not? John, neither can you. One thing I know you did. I know I did that. You definitely voted for that 40000 40000 both pay increase Ford when you're at Grace Park. That's the first thing you did, John. Remember that? You, you don't both, remember that? Both of you are you saying that. no to immediate improvement of bus services. Both of you are saying no to light rail. Both of you are saying no to immediate improvement. That's and already signed and approved. And what it means is that you're asking people to wait at Olivia, least 10 years Absolutely. I'm totally opposed to light rail transit. Totally. No light rail with me. So is Mr. Tory. That, that no, no, no. He's all in favor of light rail. That concludes well, there you have this it. question. <laughs> Who knows what he's in favor he of? Won't it. He, he won't answer the question. Let's move on to the next and final video question. Hi, my name is Carmen Celestini. I'm a resident of High Park. My question is for John Tory. Um, the public sphere in Toronto has had some problems in the last four years, and I'm wondering if you were elected. How do you heal the public sphere, not just council, but the social construct of Toronto itself? Well, it's, uh, I think that's, that's a great question, and I'm glad that I got it, because my campaign from the beginning has been about what I called One Toronto. And One Toronto, yes, it means stopping the squabbling that goes on. We amalgamated the city for right or for wrong. We amalgamated it years ago, and it's time to stop having Scarborough against Etobicoke, suburbs against downtown. But if we boast as well about being the most diverse city in the world, which we are, and I'm proud of that and I think we all are, then it's also time to stop pitting one group against another and it's time to bring people together. And I'm proud of my record as a private citizen that I've spent huge amounts of time doing that and, and, and actually being out in the communities right across the city as a private citizen. 
I wasn't doing it when I was a political candidate. I was doing it as a private citizen. But I think it starts at the top. It starts with the way you speak. It starts with the way you act. It starts with the way you think. And if you're determined to bring one city together and to make sure you increase the bridges that we build between people and between groups of people and between geographies and between those who are less fortunate and those who are not, then I think you have the makings of one Toronto, and that's what we have to do. Mr. Tory, Mr. Tory you should have listened to the question. Didn't answer the the question. question is about public sphere. It's about public parks and use of public space. That is the question. What the questioner wants is to see the red tape being cut so that it's easier for the community to come together to use their public space. They are talking about using the roads and the, and the parks and the streets so that they can come together. When residents come together, they build stronger neighborhood. That's the question. And your answer to public space, like Eckington Connects, which builds more trees, wider sidewalk where people can come together more, had been uh, yes, no, maybe. No, no, it uh, was very no. clear, Olivia. And it was very so clear. So the question let, is let really about qu using let parks. Me put how are you going to, the Parkdale residents want to know how are you going to allow the local residents more opportunity to use public space. You sphere, raised Eglinton like Connection. Let me, let me put very clearly on the record the what I said. It's not which about is one Toronto. Which is that if that and program you need to involves closing down lanes of traffic, and, and thus driving traffic into the residential neighborhoods. Well, she raised it, Rob, so no, I'm just going to take her on it. If, she, if that's what, if that's what uh, that, that's the, 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 what the proposal, the then I'm not for it. Okay. I want to be clear. If you want to go down that road. I'm not. Well, Don, you it. sat there and said, I supported Josh Matlow's motion to reduce lanes from five to two. Now you're going to say you didn't do that. You went right on TV and said, I support Josh Matlow between Mount Pleasant and Avenue Road on Eglinton, and I voted against it. I defended it. I said, we cannot reduce the lanes of traffic from five to two. Now you're saying, you don't support it. And Josh Matlow moved that exact motion. Do you support Josh Matlow's motion I to reduce said, lanes from five let, to two or not? Let me be clear. Okay. From okay, day one, there, I have well, said wait. anything that reduces lanes of traffic and pushes traffic into residential neighborhoods in areas where we have a traffic crisis like we do there everywhere else, and I'm, I'm opposed to it. No, but so why I'm did opposed you support to Josh Matlow's motion? I'm not even supporting his motion. I'm not at the city council. Oh, you need on. to listen to the expert. That's not what's going That concludes happen. this segment of the debate. We are pretty close to the end of our debate. This is the end of round two. Each of the candidates will now have an opportunity to uh, make their closing statements. We took a draw to determine the order of the closing statements. The order will be Mr. Tory, Mr. Soknaki, Ms. Chow, and then Mr. Ford. Mr. Tory, you have one minute. I started at the outset of the campaign to say that the objective I had uh, as the mayor of Toronto was to produce a city that was more livable, more affordable, and more functional. And livable starts, yes, with addressing the traffic concerns. We didn't talk much about that today, but it's a crisis, and public transit vehicles are sitting in it as well. But it also means building transit, and that includes Smart Track, which I think is something bold because we need to do something bold and we need to do it sooner than the downtown relief line, which is 17 years from now. Affordable means, yes, we do keep property taxes at or below the rate of inflation, and that's going to involve a lot of hard work producing a real culture of accountability over at City Hall when it comes to the spending and all the overages and things like that that we've seen that, frankly, still don't allow us to look you in the eye or allow the people who are there to look you in the eye and say we are using every single tax dollar as best we can. It means focusing on attracting jobs and investments to this city so that kids can have careers, real jobs they can have going forward. And last but not least, it means getting along with the City Council, working with them, working with the other levels of government, both of them, to get our fair share to build a great city. Thank you. Mr. Soknaki. Thank you very much. You know, I think uh, one of the tweets that came out during the last week said it all. It said about our campaign, we are number one in ideas, number one in innovation, number one in costed plans, and number four in the polls. And uh, I want to say that I'm running for mayor to be the mayor that delivers, not the mayor that makes excuses. The plans that we have on light rail transit, on the land transfer tax, on saving money in the big budgets such as police and emergency services can be done and need to be done to move our city forward. And where do we need to invest that money? Well, we need to spend that money in affordable housing and homelessness. We need to spend that money in our park system. We need to spend that money in all of the community service areas that we need to create this great uh, city for the future. So ladies and gentlemen, I ask for your support on October 27th for the city that we want, the city we want, 
need and the city of our future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sotomayor. Ms. Chow. We need a change of direction for a better city. We need a mayor that know what life is like, what life is like in a household where jobs are hard to come by, what life is like for family, to take care of a family, for children, for elderly parents. That have guided my career. That's why I would support investment now. I want to create a better future for our children, create jobs for young people now, moving people faster now, making sure that our children are better cared for now. And those are the values that make us great, make this city great, and have guided my public career to make a difference in other people's lives. And that is the value that we have together. There's so much more we can do. If you elect me as your mayor, we will get them done. Friends, friends, it's straightforward. I said I was going to build new subways in Scarborough. We are doing that. You've got the subway plan. Where we're moving the whole city forward in a positive direction. Well thought out, simple, to the point. I said I was going to get rid of the $60 car tax. I did it. I said I was going to find efficiencies, $750 million. I did it. We have the taxes at 1.5%, way lower than the uh, rate of inflation, and we're going to continue on that path. I said I was going to create jobs. I've read that out numerous times to you. I said we're going to not have any more labor strikes in the city. We haven't had any. Sorry about the libraries, David. Okay? I said we're going to privatize garbage. We did. And I'm going to privatize garbage in the East End. People can't wait. Folks, what I said I was going to do, I have done. Not for four years, for 10 years, 14 years. I understand the value of a dollar. I know how to read a P&L statement. I know how to meet a payroll. And most importantly, I know how to create a job, friends. October 14th, don't wait till the 27th. You can start voting on Tuesday, October 14th at the advance polls. Thank I you, want Mr. Ford. everyone to vote, no matter who you vote for. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ford. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's debate. Please give the, hand, the candidates a round of applause. And uh, now to wrap up the proceedings, uh, I'd like to welcome back uh, Toronto uh, Region Board of Trade President Carol Wyden to the stage. She will wrap things up. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, another thank you to our candidates, and I think importantly to our fantastic moderator, Tony, with the very powerful bell. I, could, I think I could auction that bell off for a few dollars. Uh, thank you to uh, all, everyone here for joining us um, at the board in the Globe and Mail's our 2014 mayoral debate. We all know there are a number of significant challenges that we need to tackle. We've heard some of that discussion today with our mayoral candidates. They've given us a lot to consider. I think it's incumbent on each of us to wade through what we heard and uh, determine what we think is fact, what we think is fiction, what we think is fantasy, and make an informed choice on October 27th, which is only a few weeks away. Uh, the board, as you know, has been particularly active on the issue of our region's transportation. We've heard a little bit about it today. In a recent poll that was released, 49% of Torontonians said that transportation is the most important issue in this election. The province, as we know, has committed $15 billion over the next 10 years, which is an historic investment. So the region needs to make some tough choices about how do we spend that money wisely. And next week, as we uh, near the end of our campaign, Think Twice, Vote Once, we will be releasing our latest discussion paper on this topic of transportation. We will also continue to welcome Toronto's mayoral candidates to our podium. John Tory will address the board on September 18th. We look forward to seeing you there. I want to thank our partners in today's debate, the Globe and Mail. They've been a fantastic partner. It's been streamed. You've seen it out there. We've got a packed room here. Our thanks also to Waste Management and to Freeman Audiovisual and Bell. That concludes our event. Have a great afternoon, everyone.
All right. That was pretty good, eh? That went pretty well. That went pretty well. That was awesome, man. That was fun.